Oh, perfect. Yeah. 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 Oh, the Fuji's Moonstar was. <laughs> Somewhere a combination between his Triton and his Dragonborn. Oh gosh, right? <laughs> yes. All right. On that note, um, it's a perfect introduction. Somewhere between a Triton and a Dragonborn. Right? Uh, so you know exactly. Now we're grounded. Now we're grounded. <laughs> we're definitely talking with Justin Maxwell here. Uh, so, yeah. Um, hi, world or video world. I don't know. It's great. Well, this is a casual conversation. We're not, this isn't a formal interview of any kind. So mm. we just wanted to record. Some, us chatting about your show. Yeah, great. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to, to seeing it go up. So. The Kanapa Jar are my sins. Yes. You say the second half better, right? I always have to really think about it, though. Of the sin part? Yes. No, the, the medieval morality. Oh, medieval morality play right. for latter day postmodernists. Post I always want to say postmodernist latter. Nope. Latter day postmodern. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You put it. You decide. I, I see you decided to just uh, see how long of a title you could get this time, right? I. I mean, I suppose so. <laughs> and Utopia Provisions wasn't 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 enough. Wasn't enough. So. No. Um, well, the reason that we wanted to talk to you is yeah. because so when we did Autopia, we had a lot of conversation mm -hmm. about the script. Well, because right. you were here. Yeah. Know, yeah. And. and we workshopped it as veggie stock. Oh, we did. And it was such a long process, mm -hmm. you know, like, and it, when we were doing the table work with the cast, there were a lot of different questions that we were like, oh yeah, we can't, we don't actually know. We never really had a nice, long, or in-depth conversation yeah, with even, Justin about this yet. Even though we have had this script yes. in our hands for over two years, yeah. we've had at least four different readings yeah. of yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. It's gone through iterations. Justin's Skyped in and yeah. seen stuff of it. So. Mm -hmm. Which is so it's kind of surprising that we haven't the three of us yes. haven't sat down and like talked through the script in some ways that we kind of talked through Autopia. Yeah. yeah. yeah so yeah. now we're doing that. Excellent. Which there's, is great. there's there's a lot in it. There yeah. is there is a lot in it. There is a lot in it. So yeah. I know it's like where where yeah, do you want to start? start? I don't. Um, I, let's start at well, the end. Yeah, let's start at the end. Oh dear God. Okay. Well, I know. Right? <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna throw the hard ones at you first. That's fine. Well, no. How so, does this end? <laughs> That's a good question, actually, and that, that is no, no, and that not not like what happens. We 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 know okay. what, we know what happens. Um, well, we do. You he dies. dies. <laughs> okay, good. I'm glad, that, yep. I'm glad that came through. There yep. was an early draft where people were unclear. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You know, he dies. Right. That yeah. is very clear. Because there's all, it's, I think it's just its own little sentence yes, there at the is. end. Yeah. Why well, it's, it's like, a, and I'm reminded of Mr. McGordon's Wonder Emporium when he when he says, you know, he writes for. Whoever yeah, in Shakespeare, he, he dies. dies. King Lear. King Lear, yeah. <laughs> he dies. Yeah. Simply dies. Um, no, I think a, a lot of the questions, or at least the question around, one of the questions I have, um, this a morality play is obviously a warning. <laughs> right? Are, this first question is actually not so much about your script and more just about you probably your own personal philosophy and things. So that's why I'm starting at the end. Do you think we're past the tipping point? I that's a good question. I don't have a strong enough science background to say yes or no. Mm -hmm. But it also depends on exactly what we're tipping over. Right. In terms of like the whole species dies? No. Right. In terms of major sociocultural change or destruction? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, um, you know, how, how much change and how much destruction, I, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, places like Louisiana are in dire trouble. Mm -hmm. And I, I, it's probably far too late for them. Um, but, you know, somewhere that's a little more landlocked and not prone to hurricanes, Mm -hmm. Maybe not so late. Mm -hmm. You're at the top of the Mississippi River, so all the stuff flows away from you. <laughs> True. You know? There was, that actually reminds me, that's really fascinating. About two oh. years ago, um, I saw a report that uh, the, the, the misconception that the Midwest is actually safe ah. because uh, under a lot of the global warming models, what happens is the... Um, the water in the 
air here yeah. goes up exponentially in the summers. Yeah. And we just boil like lobsters. Oh, interesting. Yeah, you won't be able to breathe. Because oh. it's so hot. The climate gets so hot. It gets so warm. And it just flashed the steam. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, we can finally reforest Iceland. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That'd be great. See <laughs> y'all in Reykjavik. <laughs> I bought my ticket earlier. <laughs> all those vowels and all those J's. It's um, going to be great. It's going to be great. Reykjavik, 2050. 2050, Reykjavik, yeah. You yeah. think the titles are long now. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you see. Have you seen Icelandic? Thanks. I want to come, come back to that because this, the Dutch, the Dutch, the Dutch word. We spent, so much of the table was looking up the pronunciation of and Dutch words. And listening to pronunciation <laughs> robot pronunciations of Dutch words. <laughs> On Google, but it's good. So okay, the do you do you feel that as a morality play, as a warning, that because um, I that this play sort of ends actually on a hopeful note. Is is Wiley's revelation an opportunity for us as viewers and as audience? to think that we can come to a similar revelation and thus take action and or or is the rationality will not save us and the idea that we're just going to tear that mountain flat and invent our way it, to every it, single problem that we just keep inventing it to. Um more the more of the case. Or can they both exist together? I I, th I think they can both exist together. Um I think I think individually there's not much uh, that can be done. You know, I think for an individual like Wiley, you know, there's no way out. Mm -hmm. I think for uh, groups to enact change, I, I think there are, are ways to produce results. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a lot of sociocultural change, mm -hmm. which is you know, not easy to do. And as people get desperate, they tend to go towards more um, uh, uh, impulsive uh, solutions, which are not which are more about making themselves feel good culturally yeah. than about doing that sort of work of, you know, this is our fault, we have to change to fix it. Right, right. It was that line, um, I can't see this on my own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, that really... Yeah, I think that's what the cast really honed in on that one line. And yeah. they were like, this is it. This is a very important line. Yes. We don't know why. So it's really, really yeah. important. So it's yeah. good, like we got, they got to that spot where they were like, okay, yeah. we get it. Like this yeah. is sort of like. It's one of those next, the it's the next step in Wiley's yes. epiphany yes. as he builds through yeah. his little yes. journey. Yeah. yeah exactly. Well, you had said, um, the fascinating thing was we were watching the cast who had touched this script twice yeah. Yeah. in full readings and then probably have read through it themselves a couple of times. But, you know, we have had it for two years and we have seen it for and heard it, and it initially we're like, I don't, I get it, but I don't get it, Yeah. right? And now, as we came to the end, both Megan and I, I think, as we were sitting at the table, we're like, no, I, I think I actually really mm -hmm. track this yeah. extremely well, having heard it multiple times, mm -hmm. and seen it, um, read yeah. multiple times. And so. it's, I mean, in some ways, like a lot of my work, it's designed to sort of give you a feeling that you got something, mm -hmm. but leave you really kind of dizzy and disoriented. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's a great way to describe and, it. Yeah, which I think yeah. I think it sort of fits, I think it's an emotional reaction that fits thematically, mm -hmm. where the characters are sort of, they sort of understand, but they're sort of constantly overwhelmed, whether yeah. that's the sort of, you know, floating prison of Act 1 or the sandy prison, prison of Act 2. two. <laughs> um, <laughs> the not floating because it's an island. <laughs> right. Act two. right. Actually rooted to the earth, but... <laughs> No, that is good. I mean, because, for, I mean, the first, I don't know how many times I read the show, it's like you get to the end, and it feels, it's like a tickle in the back of your brain. It's like, oh, I, oh, oh, and as soon as you try to really, like, it articulate, starts to slip away. it just goes like mm -hmm. yeah. a dream, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, as soon as you start to really describe it and, like, put it into words, it's like, yeah. no, mm -hmm. there, it's and not. Just, and that's, that's it. I think that's part of the... Part of the problem. That's part of the struggle of, of trying to process something mm -hmm. like this. Is that it's, it, so huge. it's so massive and yes. it's so hard to comprehend. And so slow. Yeah. It's fast but slow. Like, right, right, yeah. right. In in human terms it's very slow. In right. geological terms it's breathtakingly fast. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. You know, and it, exactly. it, it's actually all started because I bought a I bought a kayak 
a big plastic kayak to go kayak out in the swamps. Yeah. And, um, you know, and it was sitting in my living room because I, I made a mistake and never thought that my apartment might be narrower because I lived in one of these little northern shotguns, or did at the time. Mm -hmm. And I never thought my apartment would be narrower than the kayak. Mm. And so I know where to put it. So I had to rearrange my apartment and strap it to the wall, <laughs> turn what used to be the living room to the marina. <laughs> and, uh, and so I had my couch, my little laptop on a coffee table, and then this boat. <laughs> and so every time I looked up from There's whatever, yeah. it was just sitting there. I was like, yeah, that, that plastic thing I bought is going to, in some tiny way, outlive me by thousands of years. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, and sort of thinking about the, the culpability of that and what that, right. you know, what that means. Because obviously I'm, I, you know, I sort of recycle and do my bit. Right. But at the same time, you know. I just bought this giant plastic thing that's going to be around forever. Yeah. And, yeah, and I keep sort of coming back to that. And it's part of why it's hard to change, especially in a, a late-stage capitalism like this where we are sort of trained to buy things to manage our emotional world. Mm -hmm. And plastic is the cheap way to buy things. Mm -hmm. And thinking about things is very dangerous to our, our current system. So. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Well, and plastic is where you can't get away from it. Mm -hmm. You yep. literally cannot get away from it. Yeah. yeah. As much as you may want to. I mean, it's it's in your clothes. It's in your mm -hmm. food. Oh yeah, and, and now in your body. Yeah, it's in your food. Yeah. 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 It's in, well, and it's and I I don't know if you listened to that and up listening to that NPR thing that I shared on Swan Dive's page, but um, there was a or NPR National Public Radio did a report on um, plastic. Not from the sense of the fact that it's accumulating with garbage everywhere, but yeah. instead, what is the CO2 footprint of making plastic? Uh -huh. And they said, so you think, um, you know, paper and glass, these things are better. Right. Nope. Plastic generates less foot. CO2. Oh, and one of the biggest reasons is weight, transportation weight. The uh -huh. amount of energy it takes to move a physical glass uh, is so much more than it takes from plastic because right. it's lightweight, yeah, yeah, durable. Yeah. Um, I mean, think of saran wrap, which is awful, and right. yet it is it's so, so useful. It's, <laughs> it's also, it's nothing. It weighs nothing. Yeah. Put it yeah. millions of feet on a roll, and you're still, you know, just a couple hundred pounds. Right. There is no, Tupperware, yeah. you know, like, is much lighter than, like, so they, it was kind of this punch in the face of, like, yeah, plastic sucks. Yeah. And all the alternatives you think are so cool, not better <laughs> when it comes down to it. And, you know, Megan and I have been uh, on a kick right now of just, and it's hard, and, and I, I, you know, I, I applaud you for, you know, obviously stating the fact of how hard it is to change. Yeah. You know, there are three R's to the system. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Right. The first is reduce for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's our biggest problem. Yeah. Um, uh, there was another article just spouting out things that I know you find interesting, but there's yeah. another one recently that um, said, while cities are getting so much smarter mm -hmm. and, you know, we're going, uh, you know, solar grids and like uh, all the stuff where urban, the, the concentration of an urban environment allows for a massive amount of um, uh, savings and efficiencies. Right. Um, they said the problem is not, it's not the, the roofs or the lights or the cars or it's the amount of stuff you need to have transported in that mm. everyone buys and mm -hmm. consumes in a city. Right. Yeah, because you're bringing all the food. You have to bring everything. All the, yeah. Right. If you go live off the land, it's, you know, sure, maybe you're, maybe, maybe you're not the most efficient. Maybe you're, you're, maybe you're burning diesel to generate electricity. You're also not buying from Amazon every six minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And it's a very, so it's just this, I've been, really paying attention to these dichotomies and I think yeah. that's a lot of what's in the show as mm -hmm. well are these just really strong dichotomies between um, the philosophy and um, uh, and the thinking of Wiley yeah. which sounds good in Act One right and all of his ju all of his statements are rational yeah 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 and yet the reality of that mm -hmm. and the, the dichotomy and I think in, I don't know how clear this will come through in production, but I know in making it, all the characters are really trying to be good guys. They've all failed in one 
hopefully compelling way or another. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but you know, they all they all come into this the ex, you know the experience of the world of the play and try to try to do good and try to do right and try to either you know defend their choices or right or wrong mm-hmm. or yeah they all see themselves as the good guys mm-hmm. and they can't sort of fix it. I told you we're the good guys. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Angel says it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so. yeah, and I I think you know when you look at the choice if if in the terms of the play if you look at the choices of what are left for Wiley that's that's kind of a good guy move. Mm-hmm. So yeah, which is the really bleak way to to read that right. that script. Yes. 